Pro female genital mutilation Islamic leader tours the United Kingdom despite uproar. <laughs> Sayedna uh, Fadal Saifuddin, the head religious leader of the Shia Dawoodi Bora community and an advocate of female genital mutilation, or FGM, is scheduled for a talk in front of tens of thousands in London between July 29th and August 7th. Anti-FGM campaigners are petitioning the UK government to revoke uh, Saif Fudin's visa until he publicly denounces his support for this century o- centuries-old custom, which harms millions of girls and women. Saif Fudin has over 1.2 million followers worldwide. Previously, Saif Fudin's office had issued letters to all of his followers in nations wherein FGM practice is illegal to not engage with this. However, a year later, he backtracked. He encouraged all of his followers to perform FGM, even if residing in countries where FGM is illegal. In one of his public speeches, he said, it must be done. If it is a man, it can be done openly. And if it is a woman, it must be discreet. But the act must be done. UNICEF has reported that FGM violates the human rights of girls and women. According to UNICEF data, at least 20 million, no, excuse me, 200 million girls and women in 31 countries underwent FGM procedures. Former president of the Dawoodi Bora Welfare Society, Saka Hakasi, said, quote, given he supports FGM, I don't understand how he can be given a visa to visit the United Kingdom because it puts girls at risk. We are flabbergasted. So I thought that this was very important to talk about because one, according to UK law, people who promote FGM shouldn't even be granted visas into the United Kingdom. Yet somehow he was granted a visa to be able to speak to, you know, his large presence and audience in the United Kingdom. And it is well known that he explicitly endorses this practice and that this community does uh, do this practice in the United Kingdom. Okay, well, what, is there any explanation to why did he uh, get the visa? Did no. anybody come up? No. The Home Office hasn't commented on this, even though there have been campaigners who, you know, publicly called them out on this and alerted and learned them. Oh, my God. Are these the tools they use for FGM? You've never seen this? No. Yeah. I thought they used, like, really... Oh, my God. Home- I mean, okay. it depends on, you know, your community. It depends okay, on the what's fact available. that any girl had to go through that. Like, I thought they used like really sharp, like surgery knife and like uh, clean equipment. This looked, this would hurt even if they were cutting my hair with this. I would like get better tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Why, why wouldn't you get like a sharper, more? What is this? Okay, I'm terrified. It is terrifying. <laughs> it's absolutely. I mean, terrifying. it was already ter- it was already terrifying the fact that they're doing the cutting, but the fact that they're doing it with this, like these are rusty scissors and knives. This is not going to cut anything. This is going to be okay. Jesus Christ. Okay, never mind. Yeah, like I said, the tools in- used are definitely they they vary on depending on the region, right? But. Oh my God, Dia saying they use sharp stones in some places. Oh my God, just kill me. Oh my God. Yeah, oh my it's God. really barbaric. Um, I think it's important to highlight this because one, a lot of people don't realize that Shias actually do FGM. Like they think of it as a Sunni thing, but this is a very prominent Shia community. And also... Correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm misremembering, but my recollection is telling me that we've talked about very prominent cases of people being prosecuted for performing FGM in the United States, and it comes from this community, the da- the Woody Bora community, which is actually a very large Shia community that's mostly concentrated in India, I believe. Um, and in there's been several very high-profile 
um, women from the UK who have come forward as having this practice happen to them. And they also happen to come from this community. So I think it's really important to highlight that. Um, now, I don't know like how frequent it is in other places in the world, but there's been some estimates that in India, 75% of the Woody Bora girls in India have FGM performed on them. Um, which is just, and it, it, it's so, yeah, it's really shocking. Um, and he's very explicit in his endorsement of this practice because in the rest of the speech where he talks about like why that it should be done and it should just be done under the rug in places where it's illegal, but it has to be done. He's like, this is, you know, spoken of positively, you know, this is mandated or encouraged by the Prophet Muhammad and the Prophet Muhammad would not allow us to do anything that is harmful. So don't let them, he literally says like, don't let other people shame you about this. Like the Prophet Muhammad would not tell us to do something that is harmful. So we should do it. What? Okay. I don't understand. This is like, why is he pushing so hard for this? It's not, I mean, it is in Islam, but it's not in like, it's not that, it's not that essential part of Islam, especially Shia Islam. Like, I don't know, like, I, I don't know if we have hadith that is, okay. I, I think even if the hadith that supports this kind of encourages it, it's not like this is, it doesn't Most push schools it. of thought see it as recommended, not yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So why is he dying? Like, why? Is, I think, like, I think, like, uh, they what they're trying to do is they know that this is causes tension and tension brings attention and attention is good for their cause you know what i mean like they want to they want to push on sensitive topics just to be able to have a fight to fight like they need a fight they're like let's pick a fight and this is that fight you know what i mean just to be like yeah people people are against us and like we and we're gonna show them we're gonna oh like them. form a persecutory complex yes. so that they can yes, validate yes. themselves uh maybe because i don't want to act like this is not islamic it is islamic but it's not like the islamic it's, it's not like hijab it's not like i don't know the homosexuality you know what i mean but some it's, some schools of thought do see it as obligatory like the shafi uh school madhab like that's different really? i mean that's sunni but they also, yeah the shafi they, they find that they, it's obligatory I thought they also, wow, you know, your Islamic schools, I thought, I thought they, I thought the most, are they a Shafi? He's Shia, so he's not even a Shafi. Exactly. Okay. So he's not even a Shafi. So what the hell is, what, what does he have to do? With? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, also, is the whole, the whole point of FGM is so that sex doesn't feel good, right? Is that the whole point? Yeah, it's to like safeguard virginity, basically discourage promiscuity, but, but it puts like... girls' life at risk because often, I mean, you saw those tools and you got terrified, rightfully so. Oftentimes girls die because of the those tools that are used literally aren't clean. They're not sanitary. They get, a, many girls get HIV this way um, or other bloodborne illnesses um, or the complications from what's done to them physically itself can be life-threatening because then when they get married, their husband is supposed to literally cut them open and girls bleed to death. Or they one. can't, or they get pregnant and they can't give birth properly. Um, Oxymoron is saying not all Indian Shias are uh, just Boras. It's a very small community or, or not all Shias just Boras. It's a very small community. Modi gets a huge support from this community. You know, I never said that this is all like Indian she is. This is very specific. I don't, but that's a good clarification. People here. Yeah. Some, yeah. Um, Higgs Boson saying the Woody Boras are richer than Muslims in are, are richer Muslims in India. A lot of them vote BJP. People have repeatedly told me that the Shia Muslims do a lot better in India, which I find very interesting. Um, uh, Mogambo is saying, I think they are the richest Muslim community. They are traitors still acting like that. Yeah, it's really, I don't know. It, it just really messes me up. It really messes me up. I think yeah. one thing that I find particularly troubling is that this leader, Sayyidna Mufadal Saifuddin, he has received a lot of 
unintentional legitimacy because Prince Charles has met with him. The mayor of London, Sadiq, um, what's his name? Sadiq Khan. Sadiq Khan. Yeah, he met with him and people were furious at Sadiq Khan for doing that. They're like, how could you do this? And he he promotes this really horrific practice. And he was like, oh, like, you know, this is nothing to do with that, blah, blah, blah. So unfortunately, he has received a lot of um, validation from extremely, you know, uh, um, prominent individuals. Hmm. And for groups in within this community who fight against it, like people who are part of the Dawoodi Bora Welfare Society, who want to try to prevent this practice within their community, they have been excommunicated by the community mm. for speaking out against this kind of practice. But, you know, they still do, you know, their rituals or try to be their own community in their own way, even though they're officially excommunicated. You know, it so says that speaks to like how important it is, you know, as yeah. a practice within. It's very. Uh... It says a lot about religion where they go after something so wholesome and not harmful in any way. You know what I mean? Like, what else? How how could you tell that your ideology is toxic when you're chopping off something that is mainly for pleasure? Like, it's only for pleasure and has no harm to anyone. And you're like, yeah, we got to get rid of that. Like you're anti- And you're doing it to your children. I can't, like, if you sit and think about the mentality of a parent to do that to your child, especially. Right. Okay, here's the deal. I know that, um, like, male circumcision or male genital mutilation is 100% genital mutilation. But the vast majority of the time, you have the benefit of infantile amnesia. So you're not going to remember it. When this is done to girls, they're between the ages of, like, six to nine years old mm. so yeah. you that is such an intense level of trauma like i don't even know if you can put that into words yeah. sometimes parents trick their children into telling them what kind of appointment they're going to imagine like how that shatters the relationship you have with who is supposed to be your protector that they would yeah. do that to you purposefully and say that this is what god wants it's so dark Ish. Okay. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's religion. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, can we? Oh, yeah. That's sad. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, you want to read this comment by Oxymoron before we go? Um, Oxymoron is saying Shias in India were horribly persecuted, just like Hindus by Sunnis, also residual. Iranian Aryan culture created space for Bohemi. Shia Muslim rulers are far less harsher on Hindus. Well, yeah, because like Shias are, I mean, it makes sense that they're also persecuted because they, they'd be doing shirky things. So, Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.